festival of ideas and uh, you know this is a little different from normal conclaves because here we are discussing ideas ideology narratives with the uh, political elections also coming up soon so um, but i want to talk to you about coalitions versus one party rule what is better for india because both of you have been part of coalitions now of course there is a one party rule at the center um, more or less so abhishek uh, dr singh we are start with you sir what do you think is better works better for governance See, first of all, there is no such thing as what works better. It's that old phrase of Alexander Pope, for forms of governance, let fools contend. Whatever is best governed is best. So whatever works, that's the correct fit. But I want to say pointedly to your pointed question that it's a myth, especially built up in the drawing rooms of Delhi, that strong 56-inch chest parties one rule parties are always better because it kind of stokes our feeling of strong strength nationalism etc they can be better they are not necessarily so coalitions among other things have a very big advantage of a multi level decision making process it allows less dictatorialism it allows more consultative process and therefore the refinement of the quality of decision making is frequently better it's another myth that coalition governments do not perform well on growth rates some of our best uh, remarkably uh, economic achievements have been during minority governments narsimha rao is one example and coalition governance which is upa 1 and 2 the highest growth rates you can imagine so i think it is not very good for our feeling of stability and you know we want everything organized every hair in place every piece of cloth not sticking out and that's very good because one party rule but actually coalition governance the dissonance the diversity of views the uh, if i may say the cacophony of diverse views actually leads to better decision making but of course you could have chaos with a bad coalition governance you need good management in a coalition so that's the general answer i don't think there's a single one fit one size fit all answer okay thank you for that but uh, dinesh bhai you have also been part of a coalition government and you've seen uh, you know even though uh, you were the railway minister and you passed that what i would call the dream uh, railway budget which you presented but uh, you are, at that time mamta banerji objected to it and you actually had to leave the government for that so uh, there are compulsions uh, coalition governments you know uh, 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 maybe if it was one party rule that budget would have passed Well, first of all, uh, let me congratulate uh, NewsX team and Sharma's for this festival of ideas, and thank you very much for bringing this idea as well. So, Priya, the question is very simple: It is good for who? Ultimately, in democracy, whatever is good for the people, of the people, by the people, for the people. So, one place is. कोलिशन की सरकार जब होती है वो एक मजबूरी की सरकार होती है और एक पार्टी होती है वो एक मजबूत सरकार होती है एंड दैट इज द रीजन वर्ल्ड ओवर पीपल वुड वांट अ स्ट्रॉन्ग गवर्नमेंट बिकॉज वी आर नॉट इन आइसोलेशन फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड एट लार्ज सो इफ यू सी विच कंट्री इज रिस्पेक्टेड द मोस्ट the country which is strong and the country which has a very strong leadership so in last so many years uh, indira gandhi was very strong so was pandit nehru uh, rajiv gandhi had one of the maximum number of mps so it is that government which is strong that strong government can decide take for instance chandrayaan if you have a mix of few parties for all you know they might not have agreed and no no we don't want to spend here we want to do this we don't want to make this road we want to make something else so it's always uh, i mean we all love khichdi it's a good diet but it is known as a khichdi government and that is the reason uh, make no mistake Uh, the people of this country uh, not only the lutans delhi but the voters in the villages they are so clear about it 
that we want a strong and a stable government. And that is the reason uh, you look at Orissa, the same day election, they chose Naveen Patnaik on one side as far as the state was concerned, and they chose Narendra Modi as far as the center was concerned. So I think for the country's stability, it is always good to have a strong government. But then again, uh, Dr. Singh, a strong government, yes, but the strong government can be with one strong leader. You have Indira Gandhi also, not just Narendra Modi. But you also had a very successful coalition, both in the Vajpayee years and in uh, the UPA years. So what is that one trick, thread that unifies all of them? Is it the strong leader, whether it's a coalition leader or a government leader? I think, as I said, first of all, I don't think there is any generalization possible that all majority governments are by definition good. All coalition governments are by definition bad or vice versa. Actually, it's a mistake also to confuse strength with coalitions or lack of uh, strength with majorities. Uh, take, for example, a very interesting thing, the atom bomb or basic foreign policy or the Chandrayaan mentioned by my good friend Dinesh Ji just now. These are matters not of either coalition nor of single majority government. These are the pride of India because the foundations have been laid by successive governments and there is a unspoken, unbroken rule of continuity in fundamentals like this. Do you know that the atom bomb was ready to be tested by Narasimha Rao? You know this written down is well known. He had in fact fixed a date because of a particular opposition from a particular country outside India. The first thing he told Vajpayee when he came in is that you must complete what I decided. And Vajpayee did it. So this is the continuity of India. Foreign policy is the continuity of India. You don't, uh, you know, think that this Chandrayaan flew yesterday because of this strong government or that strong government or because of this majority or that majority. Also, I think that's why I said, it, it fits in with our notion of, uh, you know, as I said, I mean, it's, it's more a metaphorical phrase now popularized by our Honorable Prime Minister. But 56-inch chest is not always good. There's a lot of feeling about unilateral decision-making, which is not acceptable in a democracy. Uh, you had some fantastic decision-making in coalition governments. In fact, uh, most of the major delicensing issues, banking reforms, so many reforms unheard of, happened during a minority government of Narasimha Rao. That all depends on a collectivity. Democracy is about collectivities. Me, myself, I sound good, and sometimes media projection makes I, me, myself very good, but they ne don't necessarily work in practice. Narasimha Rao worked how? He had a good collectivity of progressive liberals out for economic reform. I don't want to take the names of that. Uh, four or five bureaucrats you know well, including a young minister at that time, now old. Now. And, and, and then the later Prime Minister, Manmohan Singh, heading that group of five people. This is a collectivity which sat together and decided we have to go in this direction. I think that's what's important. So I think it's, a, it's actually a myth to draw the equation in this way. You should be able to criticize an individual set of government policies, an individual set of government, coalition or majority, equally for both. Okay, well, before I go to uh, Dinesh Bhai, one more question is, uh, are you now owning Narasimha Rao as a Congress Prime Minister? Because one of your colleagues yesterday was… That's another great myth. That's another great myth. Uh, do you think Narasimha Rao did anything or wanted to do anything without being a congressman? He's fully a congressman. This, this is just spread because it's, it's useful to have these narratives. It is useful to have a narrative that Patel was antagonistic to Congress. It is the GNP, Gandhi, Nehru, Patel, which is part of the Congress intrinsically. It's very nice and fashionable to talk about it. Narasimha Rao was a staunch congressman. He remained that to the end. He, in fact, had differences, which he managed very well in the political fold because he knew that he was running a minority government. But to suggest that, you know, do we own up to him as a prime minister, well, this is all not in a festival of ideas. That's too political. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Dinesh Ji, uh, although this, is, uh, the, this government specially has been saying, you know, it's a strong government, strong leader, uh, you know, 56-inch ch chess leader, but you are going to the people as a coalition. Uh, the BJP is getting a hold of, you know, I think there are 30 on one side, 26 on the other side or whatever. So it is going to be a battle of coalitions or will it be a battle of one Narendra Modi versus India? No, I think uh, we should leave it to the people. 
and ultimately whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or not, somewhere down the line, whether it is the chief minister or whether it is the prime minister would be, people of the country always want to know who is going to lead us. When it comes to the state elections, they always want to know who is going to be the chief minister. And when it comes to the federal, the state, uh, the, the central government, they would always want to know. So directly or indirectly, actually we are selecting the leadership. And then down the line it follows. And BJP was never ever uh, saying that we want only ourselves. More the merrier, but it is very important that the foundation has to be strong. And I don't think so any political party, be it my friends, Congress party, would not say, no, no, we don't want more than 200 seats. Hmm. So it is all dependent on the electoral, who they choose. Every political party would want to have maximum number of seats. So the process of decision making, even when you take the nuclear deal, we had a problem with uh, the left party and ultimately Manmohan Singh has to say that so be it. Mm. If you want to go, you go. Mm. So problem with the coalition government is decision making process becomes very, very slow and there are always pulls and pushes and there's always, I don't want to use the word uh, blackmailing, but sort of that look here. If you are going to raise the fare of the railways, I'm going to pull the rug. So all these things, the modernization of things hmm. is coming to a standstill. So I'm not trying to say this is better or that is better. It is the people of the country are very clear as to what they want. Dr. Singh, there's a very thin line between being dictatorial and being strong. At the, you know, the, so how does that work really? Uh, let me just step back a little bit because this is, as I said, not the usual cacophony. It's a very civilized discussion. So I think we need to just look at some fundamentals. Fact one, uh, UPA 10 years and this government is almost 10 years old, almost. Take any economic parameter and I'm not divining, I'm not talking petty politics. Growth rates on the 10 year average from 04 to, 04 to 14 individual average five-year blocks, anyone you take, have been the highest ever. This government has not equaled it. Now, I'm not here to, you can say COVID, you can say financial crash, you can say all that, but this government has come nowhere near that average growth rate and few other governments have come. That was, remember, a coalition of as diverse and disparate groups as the left and my friend's former party, Mamta Ji. There cannot be a more disparate uh, grouping. Fact one. Fact two, uh, he's absolutely right. Nobody fights elections that you should be able to make a coalition. You fight election to be able to win on your own. So we are now talking of inevitabilities. You cannot have a vacuum. Now fact number two, do you know that this strong I, me, myself, strong so-called government gets no more than 39% vote whenever Modi ji performs best? When he performs best, he gets 39%. Simple commonsensical arithmetic tells you that if you were to fight the elections as an aggregation of individual states, the national elections as an aggregation of individual states, if you were to minimize the division of that balance 70%, suppose 80% of that 70% did not get divided. Well, it's obvious, you may call it coalition, but it's obvious that a 39%er cannot win. So it is actually breeding on the divisiveness. It's not a majority in the sense in which we imagine it. A really super strong would be a 51%. Nobody is aspiring for that. Thirdly, if in economic parameters you've just had the preceding government showing remarkable performance and a huge number of achievements, certainly Mr. Modi has made many achievements. I have no hesitation in saying so. I don't think it's per se because of a one-party government or a multi-party government. That's not the, the answer. It's the answer is, Leadership provided, yes, uh, you know, you had, I think, uh, post Nehru and post Indira Gandhi, 
the one party so called single majority governments how many have we had this is an exception i don't know how long this kind of exception will last so we have to reckon in india with a embedded structural coalition era we have to know how to work it well rather than harken back to big majorities yes mr modi has got a majority but that is not the structural era virtually from uh, the demise of mrs indira gandhi that is so that was rajiv gandhi was the last and that and rajiv gandhi really was not a planned prime minister it happened during tragic circumstances maybe you accidental prime ministers do well there how bad is the so called accidental prime minister you written a book about it hmm. he got the best growth rates for this country which is true you know what narsimha rao and uh, dr manmohan singh did not even know they narsimha rao was going to be prime minister in 13 days he wrote out the liberalization road map if anybody knew he was going to be prime minister narendra modi he was if you know he was sure of the results he knew he was going to win he knew he was going to even come back yet we haven't seen that kind of incremental economic reform one big bang reform we've not seen from this government see when we talk about economic reform we have to understand whether the advantage of the reform is going downwards or not the distribution system is as important if that let's say 10% or 8% or 7% if it gets stuck on the top and if it is not going down there is something which this government is doing right so from 2014 to 2019 now we are not talking about anti incumbency we are talking about pro incumbency and i told you earlier that ultimately the country decides on who is the leadership so yesterday one of your colleague channels had the survey and it's proved that narendra modi is uh, he is the highest rating ever even world rating so when people see that you are at the rating or and i totally agree with my friend that show me 50 person so narendra modi's rating is actually 50 plus and unfortunately uh, others are down below i think democracy will do very well if we have a very strong opposition as well i personally would love to have a very strong opposition and i'm sure my friend also would like to have opposition has to be very very strong in a democracy which really thrives and works so i'm and no government ever is permanent we all will come and go nobody is permanent but the country remains so we have to make sure our fundamentals are very strong and for that uh, somewhere down the line uh, something may not be right i am nobody to judge on the opposition but i feel that there is lot there are so many issues in this country if there is only one issue one thrives what is the issue of opposition That's modi right. hatao hmm. and that cannot be the issue if you talk about what are we going to do if at all we come to power hmm. people of this country always looks for a road map one mantra will not do same thing happened with indira gandhi वो कहते हैं कि इंदिरा हटाओ मैं कहती हूँ देश बचाओ दस का जो स्लोगन सो आई थिंक समवे डाउन द लाइन एंड लाइक आई सेड दैट आई एम नो बडी टू कमेंट ऑन द अपोजिशन बट फॉर द सेक ऑफ द कंट्री वी डेफिनेटली नीड अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड अ वाइब्रेंट अपोजिशन विच एवर मे बी well said but you know the point that he has made okay we uh, opposition doesn't have a face fine but at least opposition should have a narrative apart from modi hatao no i think the op opposition has a narrative it's a different matter that there we've been losing national elections and that is why this there are large number of states where the opposition rules the idea of recreating india in a presidential form is uniquely modi ji's a presidential form of government with over projection of a single person certainly is happening in our country but that does not sit well with the parliamentary system at all suppose mr modi is rated in the survey which my friend mentioned at 51% does it get him anywhere in a parliamentary democracy unless each of his individuals in the bjp wins it's completely an irrelevant but it seems nice because we like to believe ourselves in a presidential mold so i think these are matters of projection ultimately if you were today 
to find very strong regional leaders. And regional leaders were to aggregate their national elections as an aggregation of state elections. And you actually had this one constituency, one person, at least in 500 constituencies. Where would be Mr. Modi with 39%? That's a point to remember. Number two, my friend mentioned trickling down inequality. Just look at, I'm not talking of economic growth now because I've already talked about it. The world's single largest social welfare scheme, a coalition government successfully ran it, which Mr. Modi ji, without acknowledging it, is running now, Mandrega. A very big savior, by the way, in code, world's largest. The world's largest Bhima Yojana. The world's largest food security program. Not India's, world's largest. There were six, seven schemes like this, derided sometimes as leftist, called sometimes as Jholawala, ridiculed sometimes as a national advisory council, but they have become your mainstay. When the banking crisis struck worldwide, it was these schemes which kept India above and afloat. So it is not that you, and the Gini coefficient by which you uh, measure inequality, the largest number of people ever moved above the poverty line were in the 10 years of UPA government. The statistics of the government of India show that the largest number of people, 24% moved above the poverty line. So I think, again, it's this per se feeling we have because we saw a large number of years of coalition governments. Mr. Modi certainly has a great uh, uh, power of attraction in terms of showing the strength, showing that a single party rule alone is uh, going to be, but that is not necessarily fact. Fair enough. Last point to you. At the end of the day, you know, uh, Prime Minister Modi may, you know, criticize the UPA government or whatever, but he is adopting their welfare schemes, uh, whether it is Narega, whether it is Aadhaar, whether, you know, the schemes of the earlier government is what this government is delivering on, you can say. What is the big idea that this government has brought that they are going to take forward? The big idea is the idea of India, which we, which uh, the opposition right always talk about. But idea of India is not only one idea of India. It's a varied idea of India. And Indian democracy is live and thriving. I mean, look at the Supreme Courts. Look at uh, the only, only issue which I, as a former member of parliament, and I've been in parliament for long enough, I just don't understand why parliament should not function. I think that is where, if I were in the opposition, I would not lose the opportunity, and I'm sure my friend will definitely agree, that question hour, that's your opportunity to put the government on the dock. So even before the question hour starts, you go to the well of the house. If you talk about Manipur, what would have happened if you discuss Manipur after one hour, after question hour? At least there is so much you can discuss. I, as a minister, was, would love, I would ask the opposition, what is today? Usame BJP thi, to ke nahi aaj bhi thoda halla hoga. Man ka haan, bilkul halla karo. At least humko responsibility to kam ho jati. So I think uh, in all seriousness, uh, you, you have to use that platform. And again, I said, I have nobody to teach them. They are very wise people. And, and we, nobody can take away from what Rajiv Gandhi doing. I mean, there's a lot of modernization in terms of technology and all. My friend Sam was also here. So nobody is taking away the credit, even for Chandrayaan. Mm. Definitely nobody is taking away the credit. The credit is there, but in spite of that, I'm sure you'll agree that there is something right this government is doing. He, they are getting elected again and again, and there's something not right which the opposition is doing that people are not electing as far as the center is concerned. Sir, I think that is a very good uh, last... Dinesh Bhai, that's, that cuts both ways. That's a dangerous sentence. You know, if electoral validation meant you are doing well, then electoral validation also includes the negative. A lot of things you don't do well enough. And therefore, this electoral validation changes all the time. Of course, it And does. there are enough things in democracy which you don't do well, you do well, certainly some. But that's the strength so of electoral democracy. Electoral validation by itself is not a guarantee of being correct. For the people, of the people, by the people. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, that is a lovely note to end on, on this festival of ideas. Thank you so much, both of you for taking time out and being with us. Thank you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.